David, I've got something unbelievably cute this week. Unbelievably cute. What is it? It is a Land Rover Defender 90P300. This is the one we reviewed a little while ago. It's the five-door model. David, what's the difference? What's the main difference? Two doors. And I think the proportions of this three-door model are better than the five-door model. I think this uh, three-door, other than the older models, it's much longer, it's not as stubby, and I think it has better proportion for that. Well, this may surprise you, David, but the Jaguar man told me that this was the same size as a Range Rover Evoque. Ah. Now, to prove that, I parked in this parking spot. Those tight spots at shopping centres, normally destined for minis and Mazda 3s and so forth, this fitted in. It may look huge, but it's not. Now the front of the car, that's basically the same as the five door. This has got some rather neat white wheels, which harken back to the old model. Oh, indeed, steel wheels. Which I, I really like the look of. It's still got the same Defender features that the five door has, but all I've done is lengthen this front door and cut out the rear door. But that doesn't mean that has cut out much in the way of rear legroom because there's still tons. Getting into the rear now, you notice there's a big tyre on the back that really does bugger up your rear view from the rear vision mirror, but they've got a trick for that which we'll show you inside. You'll notice there's a camera up here on the top of the fin. That'll become obvious once we're in the cabin. But you just pull this little latch open. Dave, what do you think of this space? I think a hatchback would be only just acceptable with it. It is rather small. It is rather small, but I think, you know, you'd still fit a suitcase in there standing up, a full-size suitcase standing up, which I think is okay. But it's got a couple of little party tricks. And that is, there's this little kind of bag of cables and so forth and tubes, and it fits in here. So if you go on the sand, you lower the pressure, but of course if you come off the sand, you want to charge it up again. And you could uh, also pump up your little inflatable toys and rubber rings and <laughs> flamingo floaties and that kind of stuff. There's also a couple of coat uh, bag hooks here. A little bit high up for a shopping bag, I'd have thought, but uh, Might. nonetheless. We talked about the small space here, but there is a 40-40-20 uh, fold-down seat system. And it's got this checkerboard pattern that you've got on the front fenders, which I think is kind of cool. This is ideally made for throwing your dirty rubber boots in the back. Underneath the rear floor, there is just a little space for the jack, which would be handy because the rear tyre, obviously, as I said before, is up here on the rear door. Also in the rear door, there's a little space to keep your bits and bobs. Uh, they jingle, jiggle around in that, I would think. And of course, your warning triangle. To get into the back, there are levers here. You ignore those. You go to the easy to reach. Uh, now, of course, the back seat is still up from our demo in the back, so you're going to push that up. Lovely, that was easy enough. I haven't got a thing to stand on, Alan. Uh, I'm not going to do this a running board. I'm not going to do this elegantly. Jeez. <laughs> I'll sit in the front. <laughs> I can't get in. Can you not? Not easily. If I duck my head, I see I've got nothing to hang on to. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Up, up. Up. I've done it. I think you're going to need to be a few decades younger to get in the back easily. Can you imagine Grandma getting in the back? <sighs> Alrighty. Now you're going to ask me about space. Well, it's not coming back all the way, but I tell you what. I think that it'd come back further, like to, to have enough room in the front, like that seat's not gone all the way back, so you couldn't possibly sit in the front. But uh, the front person would have to adjust that. Alan, I've got a little cubby hole here. That is for your accessories. So things like a tablet accessory and a coat hook. You've also got a little five volt plug. Overhead, David, the roof is just extraordinary. That is a full length just about. So uh, you can only open that from the front. Headroom, would you bash your head on that? Yes. Do not take me over any rough roads. Right, Alan. but you've still got some lights and of course you've got the little skylight above you. It's this 
little bit of extra light, which I like. I quite like. Mm, I can't, of course, open the window. Are you claustrophobic? <laughs> Why don't we try the front seat? You got my best angle there, <laughs> Alan. I'm sorry, David, it's the only <laughs> angle that's available to me. Oh, I'm trying to find the... You're not really making that look very easy. Jeez, that's some... Um, I reckon stick the kids in the back, keep the front for the adults. Yes. Down here, this is a part electric seat. So there's a height adjuster and the seat going backwards and forwards is manual. Here is the lumbar support, but it's also the back support. So once you put the seat back, the seat back will go backwards and forwards. This is the mirror we were talking about before. Looking backwards out here, you can't see a thing. All I can see is the tyre and, and the rear camera, no matter how much I adjust that. But if you flick this, this becomes a TV screen and then I can have that at any angle I like. But you can go back to a normal mirror if you want to put your makeup on. Yeah, but if you want to put your makeup on, you just use this. Do you put your makeup on often? I do, don't. David. No. It, it was a theoretical comment. <laughs> That's what they all say until I get caught. <laughs> right. I like the the console. Very very simple, and we covered that in the previous video. So I'm not going to go over that too deeply. Okay. The important thing is this had wireless Apple CarPlay. Now, just then I dismissed the pin that I sent to you. Which right. I, evidently you didn't find. No. No. But said, don't pin yes, or had I accepted that, it would have shown you where I was. Ah. And that's the advantage. You can just send somebody else your directions and it comes straight to your car yes, if you've yes. got it corrected, uh, connected to Apple CarPlay. And once you've done that wirelessly the once, you don't have to do it again. Great reversing camera, a 360-degree top-down view, which I really like. The good thing about the engine and transmission is that it is very smooth, but it is a turbo. It's one of their ingenious engines, David. Yeah, two litre, 221 kilowatts. That's the same as a STI, WRX. It is, but of course this is uh, a little bit heavier than a WRX. Uh, and it's just a two litre, and it's got 400 newton metres of torque. Gets off the line quite well, I thought. There's no on-road drive programs, though. You've got economy and regular, which is, you know, a little bit kind of disappointing. How do you f change those? To get to drive modes, you just press the drive mode button. The right hand air conditioning control then becomes the drive mode selector and rotating that will take you through the various settings on the dashboard, which I think is really rather clever, but I really would like a sport mode or something to give it a little more pep. You can see that the dashboard here, while we're on the subject of the dash, is full width, gives you all the information you want, but it is quite difficult to go between functions. Going down these quiet streets, this does feel quite big. It feels much bigger than a small car. Jeez, you sit up high. Have a look at that little sedan in front of us. The little Commodore? <laughs> That's a full-size Australian car. That's minute. Blimey. And you know, we even sit above things like RAV4s and uh, even really a Toyota Land Cruiser, I felt like I was above. <laughs> Let me show that, you. That's a psychological thing, Ellen. Probably is. Now, I'm going to show you this. You can see the roof opening up behind us. I love that. It's like an old Fiat 500. It is a little bit. Well, I'm, while we're here, why don't we try the acceleration? This is just in normal mode. What's the weight on this? Uh, 2,100 and something kilograms. And what's the five door then? Bloody hell. All right, now my foot's flat to the floor. Well, I mean, it picks its skirts up uh, for sure, but it does uh, need a little time to spool up. Eight-speed gearbox, I think... It's very smooth. You notice the poor acceleration from 80 to 100 if you're moving to overtake something. I think it yeah. felt its weight, and perhaps at those speeds, once you get over 80, Wind resistance becomes a greater component. It's not exactly a slippery shape, is it? Uh, no. I like that I've got Defender absolutely everywhere. I've got it here in front of me on the dash. And in built into the dash, I've got these grab handles for going over rough terrain. This car is made for off-road. Hmm. This car is its almost sole purpose for the horsey crowd. 
is to be on their country estates pulling a horse float and that kind of thing, and I think this would be really good at that. You probably want the bigger engines for of that. Of course, of course, mm. the diesel perhaps. Mm. And remember, there's 60, 70 year old Land Rovers still driving today. Okay, some of them are not in the best condition. And that's all this week for Land Rover Defender 90. I love it. I love it. I'd happily have one of these. The only thing that would worry me about it is the longevity, the reliability, once it's more than a few years old. It's wonderfully smooth to drive, particularly compared to the old ones and even given the tyres yeah. until you go through a tunnel. Well, that was the funny thing, of course, the, the canvas or, or, or material top is a little noisy in tunnels. But uh, I actually like that slight retro feel. It's got some slight retro feels about many it areas. It does. But as always, David, it's that time again where you must hit like. Leave a comment. And just over here to subscribe.